Peters uh, came about because we met John McBride, who who also had a movie through the company that, that released Splatter Farm. His movie was Cannibal Camp Out. So we got together, we decided we'd make a movie. I wrote this script called Invasion, and it was going to be a, a kind of an upscale uh, alien invasion movie. However, with our meager budget of $500, uh, our S-video equipment, uh, our, our video toaster graphics, and our, and our now professional SVHS editing decks, it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. This is getting really strange. The movie really is an homage to those 50s sci-fi movies. Um, Night of the Blood Beast, uh, Invasion of the Saucer Men, you know, etc., etc. You can see, uh, you can see the, the inspirations and some of the homages that come out. The movie was shot in five days. I think I wrote the script in three, sent it to John uh, McBride, and we had another guy, Bill Morrison, making the, the feeder puppets. We had two of them, they were about that big. Uh, coincidentally enough, they're cannibals, but you never see their mouth move. I, mean, I, I can't explain that one, and I directed the film. <laughs> I'm really proud of what we did with Feeders, and uh, it was just a fun movie to make. And co-directing with John was a blast. We made a lot of movies with John McBride, and we just clicked. You know, it was like he was a long-lost brother. After we were around each other for five minutes, it was like we'd known each other our whole life. So there were no problems shooting, other than we were tired, and and it was a daunting task when you looked at what we were trying to do. It was probably also one of the earlier shot on video features to use uh, CGI graphics. Now people can, can, can blast us for making uh, cheap movies, but sometimes we're ahead of the curve and we don't realize it. Feeders was using you know CGI and digital effects to its advantage. I think it's one of the better parts of the film. And uh, you know, that's something that we're really proud of. And I remember I sent a copy to Blockbuster, um, and I was at work, and I got a phone call from this guy, and he said, "Yeah, we're, I'm representing Blockbuster. We, you know, we got your movie Feeders. Uh, we we, we want to pick it up." And it really, at that point, you know, I, I had become a little jaded when dealing with this kind of stuff because you get your hopes up and. I'm like, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. And he says, well, 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 think about it. Think about what you'd sell us uh, copies of the cassettes for, or we'll offer you this much. I can't even remember, but um, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I really, I didn't blow him off, but I really wasn't, I really wasn't that interested. I don't know why. It just, it didn't strike me as something that was legitimate. And a day later, the guy calls back again. He says, look, we really want this movie. So I knew this guy was serious, so uh, we worked it out. By the time it was done in less than two years, they had bought over 7,000 copies of that film. And despite how bad people think it is, it was their number one independent film rental for 1996, which means it outrented Charles Band's Full Moon movies, it outrented some of Roger Corman's direct-to-video movies. And, you know, that's nothing to laugh at. Now, a lot of people will criticize the movie and say, well, I, I can't believe they would put that movie out in Blockbuster, blah, blah, blah. Well, what they fail to realize is that Blockbuster wanted the film. They had seen it. That Everyone in their marketing department saw it. The president of the company, I was told, took the movie on vacation with him because he wanted to see it. Everyone said, you gotta see this movie. And you know, I'm sure it was for the, the, the camp factor, but nonetheless, they wanted the movie. And I always tell people that, that are angry, angry filmmakers that say, well, we made a movie better than that. I'm like, well, if Blockbuster came to you and said, we want your movie, would you tell them, I'm sorry, I don't think it's good enough, no. 
course they wouldn't. You know, it's an opportunity. <laughs> Feeders was a cheap movie. It was, a, it was the best we could do with what we had. And again, we're trying to reach beyond what we can do. We could have made another slasher movie or a vampire movie, because anyone can do that and they're easy. But we wanted to make an alien movie, and uh, you know, and and people give you shit about it, but it's like, you know, what do you, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry, I made feeders. No, I'm not going to do that. Feeders is what it is. It's a it's a campy throwback to 50s science fiction movies. And if if you don't like those movies, then go watch something else. Um, I, I'm proud of it. Is it is it perfect? Hell no. It's got a lot of flaws in it. But you know what? It's shot on video, and we gave it the best we could, and it was the right product at the right time. And Feeders probably will go down in history as one of the most successful shot on video movies ever made.